I'm Casey Benjamin, and you're watching my father's show, Culture Shit. Say the music of the YC in the background. Where did I say? This is time for Culture Share one more time. I am Harold Paisidi and it's great to be keeping you company. Well, today as usual, we have another great session in store for you. The Dance the Calypso series returns and we'll be meeting a presidential scholar in the US of A. Yes, it's the son of our executive producer, Gentle Benjamin. His name is Casey Benjamin and he's a musician, he's an arranger, he's a producer and uh, being a musician, he's also a great saxophonist. So we'll be meeting Casey Benjamin later on in the program because of the 140 people that were presidential scholars this year in the entire US of A. He's the only one from New York City. Well, we're gonna set the wheels in motion and begin with Madame Okahanta. You got it right, the man is David Rodder. Big, big boy in the house of the bodies, eh? One of the warriors break away because pageant thing is part of the tribal law. From the days of Roughneck O'Halloran, right down to Snapperman Solomon. So in the tradition of the hunters declare a war Well then the chief called a council So as to make an example They say here, here the council declare We love you, may devil, you must get out there She said, boys don't bother Hello, this is me, not my brother She said, no, no, tell them the speaker says so But don't you Westminster Red Lock She put the government in a headlock Everybody say, you're late, you're late I'm talking about Madam Ocahontas You touch the lady chair, you get your head Cause we ain't say Come on. 
Ambassadors of Calypso and Ahsoka, David Rudda, Madame Ocahontas, all happening on Culture Share. Well, it's great now to continue the Calypso series, Dance the Calypso. And it's written, produced, and directed by John Barry, who is from Trinidad. And today, the saga of the wave in Soca continues. The are making songs to connect with the people. It's most interesting, you know, a lot of Calypsonians are claiming now that they started a wave. And going back in some of the videos that I've looked at, surprisingly, you would see people like Gypsy encouraging the crowd to wave with him when he was singing Sing Ram Bam. Um, Tambu was one of the early wavers. Tambu went in the mass ground and, and cemented as part of the thing. We took off his shirt and wave it, and the whole audience started to wave to our landing. I think Super Blue Super Man Blue really yeah. brought everything together. You know, because when I, I, I heard um, the toilet paper, I didn't necessarily feel to wave the toilet sure. paper. Some people did. Yeah. But I think now it's just a, a whole movement of people just listening. Everybody, everybody will do the wave and jump. We want to have a good time. You just tell us what to do, Super, and we will do it. Jump up and wave your hands. 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 A lot of other Calypsonians fed off of that. Mm -hmm. And we as um, people in the audience, Enjoy ourselves. We love to see. I mean, it's the most amazing thing to go down Skinner Park on a semi final and see a man mm -hmm. like Super Blue come on stage and you see 20,000 people raising their hands and mm -hmm. waving yeah. flags. Mm -hmm. And you know what I mean? Super Blue is responsible, but he is the master of the art form. I mean, look at this year with Lara. Without us even knowing that he was telling us to do it, we were giving the signal, you know? So I think he has perfected the art and he has moved on. The others now are still living in his shadow of doing whatever. We jump in one, one, two, one, two, three, four. Give me the tight every day. Jump up and wave. Jump up and wave. Jump up and wave. Jump up and wave.
I would think that he was the first person to say, listen, this is my way of doing things, and I want you all to do it this way, uh, demonstrating it, instructing the public, because a lot of the songs we get today are really instructional, and uh, Shadow was definitely the first to come up with a unique way of just jumping on one spot and having a whole t group of 10,000 people all doing it at the same time. We're always trying to find a particular kind of dance. Individual Calypsonian brought individual influences and things. Shadow, um, plus two men who used to dance out of time also brought influences like Slammer, plus Popo. My first tune that I remember from Shadow was The Basement. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is when people really got into the, the Shadow dance. I was planning to forget Calypso, to go and plant these in Tobago. But I am afraid, I can't make it great. Every night I lie down in my bed, I hear him a basement in my head. I'm bam, 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 bam. I would credit him will be the first person to really create a dance that became the norm for the carnival period and which up to today is still recognized as the shadow dance. As soon as you hear his music, you see the whole crowd starting to do that. They just have to see him come on stage and you start this bobbing up and down. Brilliant. After shadow, men try, eh? Slicky do a thing called the goat going mare and do a goat dance. A fella named Typha do a thing called the sandfly. I find the donkey was too hard and the chorus was a going whap. Then we going whap. All body fed. Dance called the sandfly. This thing with animals just took off. I don't know. Um, I think what started it, I think, was the donkey, and which was Ronnie and the United Sisters mm -hmm. the same year. Wait for the donkey. Wait for the donkey. Whoa! Wait for the donkey. Whoa, donkey. Whoa, donkey. Whoa, donkey. Whoa, donkey. Whoa, donkey. That took off, and in Ronnie's tune, he was given instructions how to do it. Put your two fists together, put your elbow out, and with a forward motion, we will start the shout. Start the shout! Oh, donkey, whoa! Oh, donkey, watch your body! Oh, donkey, whoa! Oh, donkey, spread your feet apart, with your two knees touching, push your oomsie out, and your hands still clutching, and your body! Oh, donkey, whoa! The donkey didn't start here. The donkey started by a Calypsonian, I think, Pat, out of um, the Virgin Islands. And um, it is said that on tour, our boys saw him doing the donkey and they felt they could do a better job with it. Ronnie came out with the first donkey purely as a novelty, uh, almost like a straight rap with just a beat behind him. Oh, donkey. Oh, oh, donkey. The United Sisters came out with a more up-tempo version with musical input and they almost sent Ronnie's donkey flat, causing Ima Nectar to go back into the studio, add horn lines and revamp the whole thing and, it, you know, the two really ruled the, the carnival that season. Yes, Ronnie, I like when you say time to end this donkey show. Yeah, whoa, donkey! Yeah, the dance, the cat. Oh, by the way, Frank, you, you ever ride a donkey in Karakou? Yeah. You rode a donkey in Karakou? Yes. How many years ago was that? About 28 years ago. 28? Oh, oh, what was it? What Frank was? <laughs> <laughs> Earl, Do Dominica, you ever, you ever ride a donkey in Dominica? Of course, sure. Oh, you did? Well, Roland is a banker. They say bank people don't ride donkey, that's true. <laughs> Culture share on the pulse of the action. Join us again next time around for the continuation of the Dance the Calypso series, written, produced, and directed by John Barry. I am Harold Bicety. This is Culture Share. Stay with us.
one of the chief waivers in soccer these days of course is Colin Lucas the dollar wine man but this is a special video that Colin has do the Iowa butterfly shadow and wave this is Colin in true color and look very well you're gonna see some big names in soccer music also in this video this is Colin Lucas So come with the Iowa Fly Shadow Wave Everybody, 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 Colin Lucas, do the Iowa butterfly shadow and wave. And of course, you saw uh, Chris Garcia in the background there helping him out on that one. All happening on Culture Share. School was on the mind of President Clinton this morning when he named 141 children across the country as presidential scholars. Seven of them are from New York area high schools. This morning, Channel 2's John Slattery went to school with one of the kids. <laughs> We all know when it comes to music, the president's choice is the sax. Well, the nation's first musician may soon meet his match. 
Meet 17-year-old Casey Benjamin, a senior at LaGuardia High School for the Arts who was just chosen as a presidential scholar. I feel honored. I mean, it's, 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 I'm just, I'm still trying to believe it. It's, it's just, it's unbelievable. Casey is one of only 141 high school seniors nationwide to be so honored for academic achievement, leadership, and commitment to high ideals. Seven of the seniors are from New York State, five are from Metropolitan New York. Casey Benjamin is the only one from New York City. Casey is from South Ozone Park, Queens. His teachers say his composition and technique is way beyond his years. He's just so serious about what he does, and that makes him real special. Here's what his principal says. Casey has been blessed with as much musical intelligence as one can get. Casey, who's played since he was seven, says it was his father's love of jazz that influenced him. I feel like I'm just... I'm in another world, like I'm just, you know, I'm just floating. Now to be honored as a presidential scholar by a man who knows his way around a sax. Is he any good? <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Not very? <laughs> he's, he's pretty good. You're being generous, aren't you? <laughs> he's pretty good. <laughs> and you can bet, for an honor from the president, next month in Washington, Casey will definitely be taking his sax. John Slattery, Channel 2 News. Well, this is a special moment now for Culture Share because the son of our executive producer, Gentle Benjamin, Casey Benjamin, was one of the recipients of the Presidential Scholars. Now, the Presidential Scholars is a very prestigious award for music, leadership, and academics, and he was one of the awardees. And what is even more phenomenal uh, for this uh, celebration for Casey Benjamin is the fact that he's the only young man from New York City to win such an accolade. What an achievement. The son of Gentle Benjamin, our executive producer, and his mom, Julieta. Now, Gentle is from Grenada, and his mom, Julieta, from Panama. So you see, there's a, a cultural mix here. Well, we're quite happy to present Casey Benjamin to you right here on Culture Share. And I know his daddy is grinning from end to end. Gentle, <laughs> so proud. Well, he has a right to be. And as a, a, a West Indian blood brother, we're quite happy to have Casey with us right here. So it gives me great pleasure in, in uh, inviting, I have goosebumps already, in inviting next to me, Casey Benjamin. Casey? Hey, how you doing? All right. This is star time. All right. Casey, the presidential scholar. You won it for academics, music, and leadership. Now, we saw you on Culture Share a lot of months back with your creation band, a band of young, uh, Caribbean American kids getting together to play music and you're an accomplished musician you read music but you have a love affair with the saxophone All right. <laughs> now if I ask you what you think brought you into this position being an awardee of the presidential scholar what would you say <laughs> well probably the first person I'd have to thank is, is God for bringing me here but uh, one of the great, greatest influences that I had was uh, probably the influence of my father. Um, when I was very young, he'd, he'd always play all kinds of music around the house. He'd, he'd, he'd have speakers hooked up like in my room while I was sleeping. And I guess that had an impact on me. Also, my mother used to sing. And um, my brother used to be in the jazz band also. So it was, it was really in the family. And that's, that's how I got my influence. So your father played a great deal. Yeah. Yes. Now, this is Gentle Benjamin we're talking about here, his daddy. You know, Gentle would kill me if I don't keep saying this now. <laughs> Casey, this is phenomenal because you're the only person, the only student from New York City to win such an award. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I feel honored. I feel really honored. It was, um, it was a tough... It was a, a tough competition because it was, as you know, I go to Performing Arts High School and um, there are a lot of talented people there. So I was, I was really surprised, as a matter of fact, that I got the award, being that there's so much competition. What is even more surprising to me when I first um, met you through music and through your dad was that a young child living in New York City, you're just 17 years of age, and you play jazz on a saxophone? I mean, are you crazy or something? That's what the normal kid would say. How did you really maintain such 
a, a likeness after having all of these influences around you. The hip hop and the, the raga raga and all that stuff. Right. Um, I'm sorry. I don't know how to answer that question. No, I mean, let's face it. I'm sure all your friends, a lot of your friends are into the hip hop. You put on the radio, right. you hear the hip hop, you hear the, the dance music, the house music. But you kept playing that saxophone and keeping that jazz coming out of that saxophone. Right. I mean, how did you keep that jazz sanity, oh, okay. so to speak? Okay. Um, basically, I just followed my heart. I mean, jazz is, it's, it's a music that I, I don't know, I just adapted. And um, sure, I listen to all, all other forms of music like R&B, um, gospel, hip hop, all that. But I, I interpret it around mostly around R&B and jazz. And you know what people say, you know, it really doesn't matter. You know, I just I just do what I feel is right and what what's in my heart. You know. You met the president at the White House, right, uh, Mr. Bill Clinton, right. Uh, what did you say to the prayers when you first met him? Well, you know, I told him, you know, I played the saxophone and, you know, it's a shame I didn't get to play for you. He was like, oh, I, I'm sorry about that, but, uh, you know. Did he play for you? No, I didn't, I didn't get to hear him or anything. But, you know, he just said, you know, uh, keep up the good work and congratulations. Now, yeah. at, the, uh, at the hotel in Washington, you also met the vice president, Al Gore. Right. What was that meeting like? Um, basically, it was the same thing. <laughs> you know, he just said, congratulations, keep up the good work, you know. Basically it. <laughs> now, your, your record collection at home, your jazz record collection, right. is it more of the, uh, the jazz artists that your father, Gentle, were into? Or is it more of the modern jazz, like, say, maybe uh, uh, a Kenny G, for that matter? I would say it's mostly geared towards... Um, Old, um, I want to say old, but uh, vintage, 60s, vintage, 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 uh, 60s, 70s sort of thing. Um, R&B, jazz, um, anywhere from uh, the stylistics to Art Garfunkel, Russell Tompkins Jr. Yeah, woo, I love this guy. He can really sing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's 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 a whole spectrum of music, but I yeah I do have modern music too, but you know mostly vintage. Okay, Casey, we're going to take a short break right now, and we're going to come back, and we're going to see you play that saxophone. You're going to do a Duke Ellington piece for us uh, on Culture Share, the piece you did at that show where all of the, uh, the winners came together right. on stage. Okay. That's coming up with Casey Benjamin on Culture Share. This is Culture Share, and I am Harold Bicity, and this is Casey Benjamin, the Presidential Scholar here in the U.S. of A., 141 across this great uh, country, and the only person from New York City, Casey Benjamin, getting such an award. Well, there was the big night, the night when all of the winners came together to perform on stage, and of course, Casey was there in fine form, in regal splendor, they say, so to speak. I love those words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you fed them perfectly too. <laughs> now, when you were thinking of the selection to play that night, why did you choose In a Sentimental Mood by Duke Ellington? Um, it's, it's probably the, the most com comfortable tune I, I felt playing. I'm, I mean, I had other selections too, but this is like the most, most uh, I could say, comfortable tune that I feel comfortable playing. And the little jazz ensemble you had in the back of you, right. on the money. Oh yeah, yeah. Those, those guys, they, they play with all the legends like um, Cannonball and Coltrane. So that just even made it better. And they played with you. Yeah, yeah. That is. You in for the big time, man. <laughs> oh boy, I hope you come back to Culture Share. You know. Yeah. You hear that, gentle? Oh, yeah. Hope you don't forget us, right? <laughs> all right, let's stop the talk now and go on stage and get Casey in action on the saxophone doing Duke Ellington's in a sentimental mood. Casey. Thank you. 
destined for superstardom without a doubt that piece was absolutely magnificent thanks thank you. beautifully done and i know your dad gentle benjamin is quite happy with that piece gentle <laughs> let, right. let, let, let me tell you a little secret i was talking to gentle just uh, uh yesterday when i was putting all the, the snippets together and he said you know harold when i sat down and i look at that piece of casey plane i just cried mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I remembered when he was changing your diapers back then, you know, I guess. Yeah. and you're just a little thing. <laughs> Casey, you are great, man. Keep up the great work. But we're not finished with you yet, right? We're going to take a break and we're going to come back because I want to ask you a question pertaining to another kind of music. Okay. All right? Cool. Fair enough. I am Harold Paisley. Stay with us. Go to 
Casey only 17 years of age and playing jazz music and uh, there are not many there are not many people young people of their 17 years of age playing jazz on the saxophone right? and uh, there are a lot of people who are misdirected and a lot of people who maybe want to play jazz but may feel a bit taken aback by playing jazz because it may not be accepted by their peers mm -hmm. what advice do you have for that person basically um, the advice I would give him was stick, stick, you know, stick with your heart. If you, if you like jazz and you love jazz, do what you love. You know, don't, don't go by what people say or, or what people may think. Do what you want to do. You know, that's that's the advice I use for myself. <laughs> Your father, Gentle, is from Grenada. I am from Grenada. And when we sat down talking about KC and jazz, being from Grenada and having the Grenadian thing in us, the West Indian thing in us, we had the, the, the question of Caleb so came up. And we said, but wait now, we had to get the boy to play a little Kaiso now and then too. You know, bring him down maybe Grenada for carnival and uh, get him into maybe the, the police band to play some Calypso music and stuff. You, you think you can handle that? Yeah. Will you jive with the Kaiso? I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front. I mean, calypso music uh, on on music is, is very hard. It's very um complicated because I mean I've seen all the rhythms and stuff. It's, it's um syncopated rhythms. It's, it's it's hard music to play. I have heard I have heard people who play calypso music say that jazz and classical music are the hardest music to play because there's so many chords involved. Right. right. But you think that looking at the, the charts, the calypso is difficult. Yeah, yeah, I think so. You think if you grew up with Calypso in the house, if Gentle didn't forget it for a little while and play jazz, if she had let a little Calypso in the house growing up, you think maybe you would have understood it easier? A poss possibility, yeah. But you, you would take up the challenge if we say bring it to Grenada to play Calypso? Right. You will take the challenge? Yeah, I'll take the challenge. Yeah. Alright, presidential awardee from New York coming to Grenada to play Calypso? Of course. Of course. We honored. Right, Gentle? That's right. All right. Okay, let's get some sweet soccer music right now. We're going to look at Roy Cape and the Kaiso All-Stars as we begin to wind down here. And um, guess what? Roy Cape and the Kaiso All-Stars are a big soccer band, but they're going to play. They're going to begin by playing a piece of Michael Jackson's Shake Your Body Down to the Ground. Music is universal. Right. Scene? True? True. True. All right. <laughs> Wait, and like I was True. born in the wrong. You didn't get that scene thing there, but Gentle, that's, that's a whole man thing. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Roy K for the Kaiser All Stars. This is soccer music at its best. All right, great tunes. Put up something, everybody! Put up something, oh yo! Jump around like a West Indian! 
And his Kaiso All Stars um, on Culture Share. Harold, it's your turn. Oh, okay, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he took over there, you know. It was great having you on the program today, man. Thank you. I appreciate you, it. you keep up that great work on that saxophone. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And um, when you become a millionaire, remember your father, eh? All right. Right, gentle? <laughs> <laughs> and Culture Share, of course. Okay, that's a wrap today, folks. That was Casey Benjamin keeping us company. And join us again same time next time around for another great show. I am Harold, and... Uh, say that again? What? Peace? Peace. <laughs> See ya.